The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Exolix, a privacy-focused, non-custodial, instant crypto exchange. Go to exolix.com to enjoy secure and completely anonymous swaps with no KYC or sign-up. Swap between Monero and 2,000-plus assets at the most competitive rates and with no limits. Exolix.com, your fast and secure way to privacy. I like I like that one. Very well done. Exolix is, is the you know another instant exchange, fantastic service. I've only heard good things about them. We'll get them up on the show as well, so people can ask them questions. But yeah, in short, they're another instant exchange. They offer uh, very competitive fees, and uh, they really understand the Monero community and their their desire for privacy. So they you know they. They provide their services in a way that's privacy preserving. Um, I, I don't think they're known to ever do shotgun KYC. So they're supporting this show, which is fantastic. And we're supporting them. And they're also supporting the Monerotopia conference. So big thank you to Exilux. And we'll get them up here. Buddy, what's going on, man? Hey, good morning. Yeah, I've seen Exilux morning, on... Um, I've seen them on uh, Trocador. I probably, I probably used them a few times even. I'm not... 100%, but I, I always remember, I think they've got like a B rating on there, which is pretty good. It's hard to find any exchanges that have an A rating on Trocador anymore. Okay, okay. Yeah, they're, they're good people too. I met them numerous times. They came to Monerotopia last year. Uh, they were at MoneroCon this year. Uh, so I think that means something too. They're, they're, they're transparent. They're not some like nebulous thing that we don't know about, you know, know who's running it. Um, so yeah, definitely guys check them out and we'll get them up on the show as well. So people can ask their questions, but go ahead, body, take it away. Cause I've, I've been rambling on and I think we need, we have a hard stop at 1230 so we can get set up here. Cause it only has a half hour. Is it currently 1130 right now? It's currently 1140. 1140. So you just gave me permission to ramble on for like 50 minutes. That's, that's what I heard. I mean, that's pretty close <laughs> to what you normally do, I think. <laughs> so how long is No, your, I'm, I'm usually at 30 minutes. We, oh, okay. like, we'll, we'll chat it out right. like in the beginning and then sometimes at the end, you know, maybe we'll chat for like 20 minutes. But uh, now the price report's usually like 30 minutes. Wait, hold on. Let me check the chat. When When is he saying something between 12 and 1? I would be best maybe 12 to 1. Or 1230 to 1. Now he's saying see you at the top of the hour. Honestly, I'm not sure if he's coming on at 12. I, let's assume 12.30. Okay. Well, All right. Yeah, I, yeah, I, can, I can definitely be done I think, I think now, he, I think now he's saying he's, he's coming on at 12. So, yeah, um, do your thing, man. Do your thing. And I'll, I'll, I'll jump in if I need to. All right. Well, um, let's see here. We got the Monero chart in front of us. Some beautiful action here. Actually, we've got like eight cream candles in a row. Let's okay, see. Is that eight? Hold on. One, two, we three, four. bring up your... We got to bring up your chart here. Where is it? Uh, I don't see. Oh it. crap! Of course. No, no. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I've got uh, I've got the tab oh, open. I just didn't share the screen yet. Oh, how's my volume? My volume okay? Yeah, sound is good. Yep, it's fine. Okay, I should be sharing now. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't see anything on it. Just says no. There's no other. Oh, here it is. Here it is. My bad. Go ahead. Take okay. Away. Excellent. Yeah. So, uh, so obviously we've had a lot of good action. I'm sure everyone has noticed. Um, we're basically up for the past week. We're up about 16%. You know, for for a stable coin, that's pretty good to move 16%. Um, you know, an entire week. Uh, and I think that's, if I'm counting correctly, that is eight green candles in a row. So that's pretty good. Um, obviously, we've broken out from the local resistance right there. And we are now at the top side of our literally like three year long uh, standard deviation boundaries here. I say boundary, right? Not, it's not a hard boundary, but you know, it's a it's a visual reference for like statistically, where's the most likely place um, for to be trending or to be seeing support and resistance. Um, so the other thing uh, we could take a look at here is the volume. Um, wait a second, that's not volume. All right, here we go. This is Kraken volume. Um, maybe we should start looking at Exelix volume and start looking at the Exelix price instead of the Kraken price. Uh, but you can see down here, we've got like five five big candles of volume here on Kraken. So um, yeah, people are buying some entity and or people and or everybody 
um, are buying Monero right now. So it's actually, it's a good thing that we're seeing the price respond with big volume or that we're seeing a big price move with big volume at the same time. Um, that does put that does put a, a reason reasonably good plausibility that this is a stronger move that could actually be sustained. It, it, we could actually see ourselves finally moving to this upper boundary here and uh, flirting with the 200 area. So uh, another thing we haven't looked at in since forever is the Z-scores. So down here, this is uh, a number of different time frame Z-scores. Think of Z-scores kind of like RSI. Um, they basically ask you how many standard, how far away are you from the standard deviation? Or sorry, <laughs> let me rephrase that. How many standard deviations are you away from the moving average? I know that's kind of a weird way to put it, um, but it centers everything around zero. And it's also how we look at multiple different assets with very, di uh, very diverse prices, um, how we can overlay them all together, which is what we do when we look at all the shit coins. We'll do that later. Um, anyways, the thing I wanted to point out here is that, um, so on longer time frames, which is the blue lines. So the dark, uh, obviously there's the dark blue, which is the longest time frame, but the lighter blue and the green here, you'll notice that we're basically in an uptrend. And Z-scores can often be useful for telling you like how is the market trending in general? Um, because the way that Z-scores are calculated don't always have exactly the same trend as price. And sometimes the way that Z-scores diverge from the price action can give you a good picture of, um, of when a trend reversal is imminent. So um, you could kind of see that, and you know, we really should have covered this for <laughs> a long time ago, um, but you can see how lower lows were made on the Z-score um, as they were made on the price, which is just kind of like a point of confirmation that says, hey, we are, we, we've got positive upward momentum here. Um, and at the moment, yeah, I mean, this chart is starting to look like something that wants to break out finally. Um, you know, we say that we got to be careful, right? We still have nefarious forces. We have nefarious headwinds out there. Um, don't underestimate your enemy. You do that to your own peril. What am I talking about here? I'm talking about Binance. All right. So September 1st, all the way to March of 2025, Binance is going to allegedly sell their alleged Monero that they have on their I guess it's not an alleged platform, but you know, just wanted to say alleged four times now. Uh, yeah, so they're supposed to sell off whatever Monero that they that they still had. Um, whether or not they have any left is is an open question. Um, but you know, hypothetically, there's a chance that they probably do still have some. They, who knows? They're like, hey, we've got to meet all of our withdrawals, and you know, we we have because I think they extended the withdrawal window. So maybe it's Binance buying some of this Monero because they're like, hey, people are trying to pull out their Monero, whatever. I don't know. Who knows what those guys, um, they're criminals and CZ is now in jail. Is he in jail still? Is he on appeal? I don't know, actually. But, um, you know, he's he supposed to spend four house. months in the clink. Come again, sir? He's in a halfway house now. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. That's, it's, that's crazy. So CZ took down FTX and Sam Bankman goes to, to jail for 25 years, may, maybe 21 if he's lucky. And then CZ gets like two months in jail and like two months in a halfway house. Um, yeah, I, that, that just kind of makes me think he probably was part of the call, cabal from the beginning. And for the billions that he made, that's a slap on the wrist. It's completely a slap on the wrist. Whatever. We're not here to talk about CZ. Screw that guy. Um, we are here to talk about Monero and Monero price is doing good guys. So, um, you know, if you're a trader, okay. If you're a trader, this is a point that you might take a little bit of profit here. Eh, at this moment, I would also, you know, if I'm, if I'm a trader and, and I kind of am, I would also be looking at this saying, yeah, but could this be the one, right? Could this be the time to break out? It could be. It's possible. Um, if we go and we take a look here, we'll take a look at the privacy coins in a second. Um, but if we take a look at Bitcoin, you know, the, the I hate to call it the big daddy of the, of the market, but it, it kind of is lately. So what are you going to do? Um, yeah, Bitcoin is still in, in our big megaphone pattern here, our broadening structure. This thing is, I want to say it's meant to break to the upside, but man, this is also a very long, like this is this is turning into a very long chart pattern. So it is possible, it could happen that this thing bumps up to the top side, takes some pullback here, meanders on, oh God, we're going to crash and then comes back up and then comes to the top side. And it could, it could be all the way until 2025 till this pattern actually breaks. That, that could happen, guys. I'm not saying that's what I think is going to happen. I'm just saying that that is a plausible way that this chart could unfold. So, um, you know, I mean, in the, big, in the big picture, you know, it is a bit of a smaller pattern. I actually, you know, I take it back in the big picture. It is now developing into a larger pattern, which when broken will give it legs, right? If this, pa if, and when this pattern breaks, it will have legs to move towards the upside. Um, we are going to be targeting all the way to, to the top of the red line here at some point, um, probably next year, we're, we're going to start to be eyeing that red line. And that red line is red for a reason. It tells you, Hey, that is your sell point. Don't be in, don't be regarded. 
sell when we get close to the line. That's what that line is there is for. You DCA as you approach the red line. Uh, sorry, you DCA out as you approach the red line, and you DCA in anywhere below the blue line. So believe it or not, we're actually pretty close to the blue line, and you had a pretty good opportunity here, as we talked about a couple of weeks ago, um, to make a, a solid trade to the upside. Um, yeah, so that's Bitcoin on on the uh, on the medium long term there. Um, what it's going to do right now, probably it's going to continue moving up towards this line right here. I think for the next, um, let's just say the next few weeks, Bitcoin is, is primed to move towards the upside. Cryptocurrency is primed to move towards the upside in no small part, um, because we're looking here at the Dixie, the dollar index, um, has broken down. The dollar index has, has now, um, has broken down below the, the, uh, the standard deviation lines. And remember the blue lines are upper standard deviation, right? And you can see, I don't know how well you guys can see that, man, one of these days, I promise I'll fix my charts. So, uh, what we'll do here is we'll take a look at the moving average and I'm going to, I'm going to make this a little bit more visible. Take that transparency down. Okay. Hopefully you guys can see that on the charts. Now the white lines are moving averages. Okay. So it, it, in, in the big term, like we're looking at the weekly here in the big scheme of things, the dollar index has been still high from after like basically the bear market, right? The dollar index has still largely um, been pretty high, obviously, you know, not as high as that. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, basically this, this is breaking down the, the, the upper standard deviation bands where the dollar is hanging out is now breaking down. And uh, at least in terms of, um, you know, Bollinger band analysis, you would expect this thing to visit at least to the moving average and uh, dollar index being bearish and falling should be bullish in general for markets. Um, I think in a lot of ways that they have pulled, I don't want to call it a rabbit out of a hat because it wasn't that big of a trick. It was kind of like we knew it was coming. We said, hey, this isn't the big one. This is just a fake out. S&P 500 is now within half a percent of its all-time highs. The NASDAQ basically looking the same, although it's, you know, it's still got a little bit further to go, 4%, but NASDAQ is more volatile. Um, but at any rate, the NASDAQ is definitely, definitely um, within, its, within its uptrend boundaries here, right? So we actually have very solid uptrend boundaries for looking at the NASDAQ at this point, uh, and we're effectively just trending there. So NVIDIA, you can see NVIDIA is, is still basically just hanging out, doing the same thing. I drew a big uh, vertical line right here because that's the day that I said NVIDIA is not a bubble. Um, uh, you know, I guess we'll have to wait and see, but that was June, July, August. So that was two and a half months ago. NVIDIA is still effectively trending at that same price, a little bit above, a little bit below. Um, and NVIDIA is going to do what the rest of the market does, right? So when I say NVIDIA is not a bubble, I don't want to hear anyone come at me and be like, oh, look, NVIDIA crashed with the rest of the market when the, you know, whenever the big tail risk event comes, like, of course it crashed, everything crashes, right? Like if I say Bitcoin's a bubble or Monero's a bubble, and then the market, you know, we have a, a, a stupid medical event or whatever, right? The market has a medical event, goes into cardiac arrest for a moment. Like, yeah, everything's going to crash. But the question is, is NVIDIA going to stay at this valuation relative to the rest of the market? And is it going to pump to all hell after after they do the intervention? The answer is um, yes and yes and yes. So, um, yeah, anyways, uh, that's NVIDIA. That's, uh, that's the stock market. A little bit more uh, of a deeper look here at the macro. We are looking at um, reverse repos. And remember, we said that uh, they probably rescued the markets a little bit by, by uh, cashing out some of these reverse repos, dropping it into risk. Um, so far, that's been flat, but um, I think that they've been, we've, we've been seeing a lot of money move out of the Dixie, um, and that is probably going into the stock market, right? People are taking their dollars and moving them into the stock market. Um, so let's see, we can, I guess we'll just finish up on the macro here, and then we'll talk about some of the headline events. Because uh, <clears throat> because there's a few of them. Uh, this is bonds. So yeah, we've talked about this bond chart since forever. Yield curve is ever so slowly, barely refusing to go back into the not inverted zone, probably because that's the zone where we really start to look for market crashes. Um, although we can now see, we can now see here that that bonds like the the top of the bond market is in guys. Like I don't know if you guys buy bonds. <laughs> I doubt any of you are, but hey, some people do. Um, in fact, in some cases. You might have mad gains and then you're like, wait, what do I do with this money? We're in a bear market. You might buy a one-year bond for 5%, right? Some people did that. I, I even might know one or two people that, that did that. Um, but the point is the, the top of the bond market is in. Um, j Powell. so they have a, like every summer, they have this big conference in um, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. So j Powell said that it is time to lower rates. He said they've done, he patted himself on the back for how good that he fought inflation after he created the inflation 
and uh, and now they're going to lower rates. So, yep, the the people, the forward looking nature of people in the bond market already knew this, which is why bonds cratered. Bonds are going to continue to do this now. The stair step, it's time for the stair step to happen. Their next meeting is is in September. So unless we get crazy high inflation numbers in um, in September, so we get the inflation numbers right before their next meeting next month. Um, unless we get crazy high inflation numbers. This line is coming towards the downside in September. They're going to lower rates, probably just a quarter point, you know, but it's going to happen. And that's the beginning of the end, guys, uh, which will be um, the beginning of a, of a new beginning in the cycle of the market cycles, which they always do. And that will be the time for our bags to pump. That's that's exactly when our bags will pump. Um, OK, so, yeah, that's basically mm, is there anything else? No, nothing else is important here with the macro. I'm um, just taking one more second look. I guess gold is, you know, part of macro kind of, but gold is macro, but gold is like sovereign. So it can be both, I guess. Yeah. Gold is flirting with the all time highs. Um, it, you know, it's like it, it wants to break this line. It's hanging out here at the top, the deep state, the Illuminati's, the Illumi, uh, Illuminati bros, they don't want gold to break out to the upside. So they're like, wait, just hold on, suppress it for a little bit while we run the stock market. And then this thing's going to bust to the upside at some point here. Um, couldn't it, it could be next week. doesn't have to be. could be two weeks from now. But gold is still bullish. Um, at this point, I'm starting to think that the breaking of this line here, right, of our, of our uh, resistance line, is a foregone conclusion. It's just a matter of when. And then the next look will be the purple line, right? We'll, we'll expect gold to get to that purple line. And um, for as long as the stock market continues to be bullish, gold is, should be bullish with it. Could be at different, you know, different moments in time and fits and starts, people moving from gold and back to stocks and back to gold again. Um, but ultimately, we're going to be looking here at this line for something like around there. Uh, for like a big headliner place to say, hey, that might be actually a big spot for gold to pull back. And that might actually factor into our analysis of um, is the big crash here yet, right? But that's months away, guys. The big crash is not here. It's at least months away. So we talk about it. You know, we talk about it a lot, but I don't want to like, I don't want to fool you. I don't want to, I don't want to miscommunicate. That crash is still going to be months away. So um, yeah, for the meantime, things are looking, are looking pretty good here um, with, with prices. Uh, Bitcoin versus Monero. Yeah, we continue to make a little bit of a comeback here on the Bitcoin versus Monero chart. We are finding some resistance. So I don't know how well you guys can see this, but um, well, let me just make that line a little bit uh, brighter for you. Um, the problem is that when I look at these charts on my own, um, I the I don't want the the brightness to be too big, but on on the podcast here, it's you know it's harder for you guys to see it. Okay. Anyways, lower standard deviation levels on the XMR BTC ratio is that orange line that I'm drawing. So you'll notice we're basically experiencing a little bit of resistance here um, at that line. So, um, and, you know, I mean, ultimately, again, when it comes to the bull market, um, like actually breaking through all time highs, if you're, you know, for Bitcoin and the rest of, of crypto, like new total market cap breaking to, to new all time highs and then sustaining new all time highs over the period of at least one, but like two or three months. When that happens, um, we should see some outsized performance versus Bitcoin. There will come a moment that we we probably make it back to the 009 level. Maybe we even make it back to, to the 0 0.01 level. Um, let's see. Okay, we're looking at Bitcoin dominance here. Bitcoin dominance still doing pretty good. Um, it's hanging out. It seems to be having a, a little bit of resistance here at uh, at sort of an obvious level, um, which which is defined from the last the beginning of the last bull market um, where Bitcoin dominance crashed and then made this big rebound. Um, I you know, I'm not too sure if Bitcoin is necessarily going to be the darling of the stage here for for too long, um, but it could be right because um, part of getting the bull market going is convince everyone, convincing everyone that Bitcoin is now sustaining into new all, high, all time highs. And they did that last time by pulling from alt kinds, uh, altcoins to shove Bitcoin up at the very end of 2020. Right? They just slammed Bitcoin to the upside to get everyone like bullish and then investing all their money that they got, you know, from all the stimulus checks and everything else. Um, so it could happen, right? We could see a bit, we could still see Bitcoin dominance increase that that's a possibility. Um, but that this chart moves violently, right? This chart, once the bull market is whenever, once everyone's convinced, and especially if we get a liquidity event, this chart could just smash to the downside, like very, very quickly. Um, okay. So that's, yeah, that's, that's basically what markets look like there. Um, uh, yeah, Xano has had has a pretty nice move. So looking at the privacy coins now, Xano has had has a pretty nice move here. Um, oh, look, it's even kind of matched my squiggly. What's uh, what happy coincidence? Let's delete that. Um, yeah, it's actually getting pretty close to its all time highs. It might have even actually yeah, it, it actually tagged all time highs. So yeah, Xano has been a great bet since we since we've um, store, sort of started covering it. It's up two x now. That's pretty good. Can't complain uh, if you're up two x on Xano there. 
Um, Zcash, funny enough, didn't actually do anything this week. They uh, they pulled all their gains forward from the future. It's almost like they have some sort of money printing machine, or it's almost like they're connected to people with the money printing machine, and they uh, they can pull those gains forward from the from the future um, while everything else pumps. Or it pumps early, and then you know it's just sitting here hanging out doing nothing while everything else pumps. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm just kind of like talking out my ass there. Whatever. Um, okay, Darrow is is also languishing. Like Darrow didn't do anything this past week, and you would think with all the positive news that Darrow could do something, but it's still having problems down here. Um, I'm sure that they'll find a way, you know, to get this thing to launch it for some period of time. Is that going to be next week? I don't know. Like I said, we talked about, Hey, this could be a spot right here. We're in the zone to, to maybe take along here. If you're going to do it, you know, don't do it with any significant amount of money guys. Cause this chart can still crash further. Um, especially when they had such a catastrophic failing as they did. Firo's up. Firo is actually um, now on tagged the underside of the uh, the lower standard deviation. You know, now that I'm looking at this chart, these red lines down here, one thing that is common to happen is that you'll actually dip below the red lines. I don't know how well you can see them, but you dip below them. And then um, and then if you make some good comeback, uh, that actually could signal the bottom. That, that could signal that this wick down there was a low for Firo. So um, I was talking about how this chart does not look good, how it how it's been, um, you know, that... That, that overall the chart structure um, is negative and and to be very careful with it. Um, this is one of those times where you where you're kind of like you move from a very negative position saying, okay, maybe I'm changing my mind here on this chart. Um, maybe Firo um, is actually putting in a bottom here. Maybe it's showing some strength, um, whereas the chart previously looked bad. This doesn't look good. This doesn't look like a good chart, but at the same time, um, this does plausibly look like what a bottoming pattern might look like. So um, yeah, just... Uh, yeah, and then uh, we already talked about Monero. We got here on the left here, um, basically getting back to our, our local highs. Um, I think, okay, so <clears throat> let's put all that aside now and talk about a couple of things that happened. Um, Justin Sun, he got, uh, let's actually go to our shitcoins now. Shitcoins, shitcoins, these are the Z scores of the shitcoins. Okay, so you'll see TRX in green. TRX is pumped, good, big pump, <laughs> good. Quote, unquote, good, good for Justin Sun, good for Tron, good for anyone that's playing in the Tron ecosystem. <laughs> ecosystem is such a nice way of calling it. Um, okay, but Tron, uh, Justin Sun somehow got Tron listed on Dex Screener. Dex Screener is like the primary, one of the primary go-to places for people trading NFTs and ETFs and, uh, sorry, yeah, not ETFs, uh, NFTs and uh, just like different, tokens um meme coins and all of the other um like erc20 and trc20 all of the garbage all of the the lowest of the low garbage that you can think of for meme coins all get traded um and most people go to deck screener uh so anyway somehow he got himself listed on deck screener which has been a source of a big pump um you know guys Tron will remain relevant for as long as it continues to receive the billions of usdt from palo and the gang from from tether um, so as long as they keep getting money, like somehow Tron is going to ma- remain relevant. Um, uh, I guess, you know, why not? Whatever. Like Soul is is also a pretty centralized train and it's also used. It gets a lot of um, tether. And OK, so just just know that that's out there if you're a DJ. Um, yeah, Tron did a pump. Everything else is moving towards the upside, but Tron actually really pumped it out. Um, and the last thing that we're going to talk about here uh, is Kraken. Oh, here's the here's this just really quick. This is where Binance said, hey, um, we're going to start selling um, specific cryptocurrencies. So this includes Monero uh, <laughs> and Bitcoin Gold. Uh, that's great. So we're relegated in Binance's eyes to uh, to Bitcoin Gold um, level of status. Okay. So September, 20, September 1st, um, they're going to start selling, removing, selling whatever uh, remaining Monero that they have. Probably they're just going to give it to the CIA since they're an American um, dominated company now since, since uh, they're basically... They do what the U.S. says, and apparently this is going to continue until March 2025. <laughs> okay, whatever. We talked about that already. Okay, so um, the there was a ruling. I think it was the Ninth Circuit, California. There was a ruling between Kraken and the SEC, and basically what we're getting is confirmation of what we've talked about for a long time here because we covered Ripple for a little bit. What we're getting is confirmation is that the courts don't see tokens themselves per se the like the actual tokens or networks they don't see them as securities so um effectively the sec is is saying kraken you sold securities on your platform and and uh you're bad and you must pay us money so that we can protect people now um from what they're going to do if you don't pay them money um yeah so there, there's been like some back and forth on what this ruling actually means it wasn't so here's the deal it wasn't actually exactly a ruling it was more of a, a judgment 
um, in terms of will the case proceed or not, because Kraken had, had put a, um, a motion to dismiss and the judge denied that motion, motion to dismiss. But in the denial were some interesting things. So you can see here, it says, um, although the way that the SEC labels crypto assets as crypto asset securities, that this is unclear and confusing. Um, and that, so the judge does this kind of like Jedi mind trick. And it's really like to say that gives more credit to judges than I think most of them deserve, but some of them are, are good. So I don't want to like hate on all judges. Um, but anyways, <clears throat> he says, you don't, you're not saying that all tokens are securities, right? Right. You're just alleging that, um, some of the transactions that were involving those tokens the transactions were securities. Like for example, um, when you when you sold the initial token sale or helped them sell the initial token sale, um, but you don't mean that the actual networks themselves are securities. And just to like hammer the point home um, even even more clearly, the SEC says going forward, or sorry, the judge said the SEC must be careful going forward to maintain the distinction because if it tries to argue that individual tokens. Um, are investment contracts or are themselves securities, its argument cannot proceed. So it's telling the SEC, you are not allowed to argue that any of these tokens or networks that you're alleging or any of these cases of transactions that happened on Kraken, you're not allowed to allege that the tokens themselves are securities. You can say that Kraken sold investment contracts, right? Because it's not just the token. It's about the circumstances surrounding the sale of the thing, right? It's just like the orange, the orange groves in Howie. It's like, the oranges were not securities. The trees were not securities. But the selling of that, like of the totality of what was sold there, hey, we're going to sell you um, this, you know, the the uh, a plot of land, and we're going to manage uh, the output of those trees, and we're going to sell it, and we're going to gain a profit for you, and we're going to return that profit to you. All of those circumstances together <clears throat> amounted to the sale of an investment contract, right? Which is a quote unquote a security equals an investment contract. So what they're saying is the, the tokens are not an investment contract. It's just the way that you handle them. And so the case can proceed. But again, we're just getting more confirmation from the court. Tokens typically almost never are securities. It's just what you do with them, right? It's what you promise about them, how you sell them, how you market them, um, and then who helped you do it and, and all that stuff. So anyways, um, that was just, just know that if you're out there reading about um, – one side or the other is the SEC being like, ah, we've won, ha ha, we, we, we can proceed, this is our victory, all right? And then Kraken legal is like, and other people like, oh, this is a sweeping victory for Kraken. Just just know that there's more nuance than that. Okay, um, other than that, um, I, I don't know if we've got Seth here on, but uh, if Seth is here, I don't want to take up any more, <clears throat> any more time here. Um, so Doug, I will hand it back over to you. That's the crypto markets. Things, again, uh, things are up, the direction's up. Um, that doesn't mean that it's going to happen like tomorrow. It doesn't have to happen even next week. Um, but, but but the more likely direction here is up, um, and that should continue um, for for really. I mean, we're looking through the end of the year. We should be getting gains across the board: stock markets, crypto, risk assets, etc. So that is the price report today. Handing it back over to you guys, or not? All right. Thank you, Body. Appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Um, do we have? Do we have um, Seth up here? Where's Doug? <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Yep, there he is. Indeed. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. We can hear you. Okay, good. Sorry. I moved my speaker. So, Body, what what would you say the, uh, you know, the what, what what is your prediction with regards to the election? And how the Monero price will react in a Mala win versus a Trump win? Uh, at this moment, I I think we're what looking is, at this Monero Topia yeah, going to be Monero Topia is happening like the the second week in November after the election. <laughs> well, what's going to be happening if Kamala? We did this last time Trump. and we were both uh, wrong. <laughs> where were you? All right, let's just now you had a. Let's just let's just make it the obvious. So in November, Monero will be two hundred and thirty dollars. Monero will be at the top of the of of the upper standard deviation band right there. Hmm. So how do you feel? Uh, so how do you think the the election will affect Monero? Or you're, you're just looking at it in terms of the charts. So it doesn't matter what's, um, what's happening in the world. This is statistically the direction Monero is oh. headed. Monero is deciding the future. 
Overall, I don't I don't think the election matters for Monero's price. It it might matter for the way that price unfolds, but so let's just take it on two sides, right? If there's a Trump win and he actually is does pro crypto stuff, um, then then I mean obviously that's bullish for Monero, right? And my my thinking is that listen, we're looking at this this tail risk event coming up, right? We like the snowball is now in motion, like it's a for it's a foregone conclusion it's going to happen, and so when the big washout, like whenever the next big crash happens, which will probably be next year, um, they're going to expand liquidity. They have to, right? They're going to start printing money again. And that's going to lead into the next big bull market. Maybe they'll restrain themselves because inflation was so bad last time, but th they're going to do some kind of liquidity expansion. Okay. Um, so that's good. That, that should happen, whether it's Kamala or whether it's Trump. Um, now with Kamala, you kind of get this extra boost because if she's going to do the capital gains, the unrealized gains tax, how many people yeah, are like, was, oh, fuck that, I'm going to Monero. At. Yeah. Right, right. That's like, what I was so getting might... at. So, so could Kamala be the better the better Monero outcome if they start to do things like talking about uh, unrealized capital gains? Yeah, that's that's very, very possible. Like, <laughs> so that's like, what get I've out there, thinking. guys, and vote for K. <laughs> I'm finally getting along with my other family members. I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm on board with Kamala. Let's do this. So, like, that's, that's the bad thing is if she gets elected and does this unrealized capital gains tax, then you get taxed on your, uh, you get taxed on your profits from on your on your trying, real estate even. trying under to that. get away from the inflation tax. So either yeah. way, you're going to be taxed unless you're not in the traditional stock markets and not putting your assets into dollar denominated assets. Which they can be, which can be seized. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah you you they know really they're going to carve out some special exceptions. Monero. Like you know they're going to carve out exceptions. They'll be like, well, if you're in a four hundred one k or IRA or any of our like completely controlled instruments, uh, then 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 you won't you won't get get taxed on your unrealized gains. They're also saying that it's only for super rich people. But I mean, come on, the income tax started only for the super rich people, and now it's like for the super poor. Well, yeah, exactly. Like, like that's not going to happen. It's going to be for the rich people for about two seconds. I just yeah. want to make sure we bring up the uh, the super chats. I don't know, uh, Body. Did you see these? I think this uh, this is. Dark. Oh crap! No. Yeah, yeah. Here, we take a look at this one. All Over right, here. let's see here. Bank exit. Uh, Pure Bank Exit, nice name. Um, ticked, tipped five dollars and one cents. That's like Price's Right rules with that extra penny. Hi team. Uh, paradoxically, the chart should not go up too much if it does people will start to hoard and not spend their monero and we will fail transitioning economy see gresham lax gresham lax you know what man let's uh maybe i can just look that up right now you mean like gresham's law good money yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. good yeah, money said, drives people, out bad yeah people will just start to hoard instead you know like we saw with bitcoin right so it becomes uh the digital gold meme and I, I mean, people no longer use it. Fungible money serves the use case of savings, right? Like money should serve the use case of savings. Um, and gold is a relatively stable um, savings vehicle. It relatively tracks with inflation over long periods of time. Um, from, from, the reason people hold Bit Go ahead, The sorry. reason that people hoard Bitcoin, people hoard Bitcoin because they have the hope of mad gains. That's why they hoard it. Right, but when you have money that you can save that maintains its value, um, you know, then uh, th then you have something that people don't mind spending when they need to because they're not sitting there holding out for like super mega gains. Um, but yeah, I mean, if Monero does, if price does go up, then then maybe we do run into that problem a little bit. I still think that Monero is so damn useful for transactions that um, that it we should still be able to maintain a decent amount of like actual currency use case. Yeah, I think there's so much value in, in to being able to buy things anonymously and privately that people will use it when it goes up in price because they'll they'll want to benefit fr from that, right? Uh, there's value to get from that action of spending yeah. Monero when it goes up. Uh, and Trace was saying, actually, it's the opposite for me. When Monero price goes up, I start, yeah, I'm I, I I'm the same way, and then and hold it when the price is too low. Yeah, I mean, I'm at the point where I equally spend no matter what, what the price is because I just use it to run our businesses. So um, that's why I've kind of trained myself to not completely ignore price. We got another one. Body fan tip three dollars. These are all very generous tips. 
three dollars and thirty-one cents. Do you think that the cabal is worried about undermining their own asset value and pulling back their crackdown on tokens? Um, man, I'm not entirely sure what you mean by that. Is the cabal worried about undermining their own asset value? Oh, all right, so you're saying that um, that effectively all, all of these other like shitcoin tokens are <laughs> they're 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 basically like a good way of distracting people from actual digital freedom money. Um, yeah. I, uh, I mean, I think that we're basically seeing the end of, of the widespread legal attack from the sec and all of like the different, um, executive branch attacks on various crypto quote unquote currencies, right. Crypto assets. Um, they're kind of at the tail end of this. I think we know what, what, things are going to like what the courts are going to rule on it um probably next next year with the next presidency or whatever like we're going to see some comprehensive crypto legislation come out of this it's going to regulate stable coins um that will probably actually be bad for crypto i think right now i kind of like that everything is in this gray area and people it's the wild west people just do whatever um so yeah they probably will actually pull those attacks back at some point here and that will probably be accompanied with um with actual legislation all right, we also have uh, Demi Goddard. Gresh Law lacks. There would be also sorry, I'm so bad. At, it's the problem is it's on my phone, so like I'm looking at it on my phone. Yeah. Gresh Law lacks. There would also be the demand to be paid in Monero. Yeah, yeah, that that there's also that right. So people yeah, want the thing, so you're going to have to transact in it. 